Hello and welcome back to Prescriptive Analytics. In this problem, we are going to combine both the integer linear programming and the binary variables. And we're going to try and establish a link between fixed cost and variable cost. Uh, to understand the fixed charge problem or the fixed cost problem, uh, you have to look at it in this way. You incur a fixed cost uh, no matter how much you produce or how much you sell, there's a fixed charge involved. And then you have a per unit charge. And unless you incur this full fixed cost, you're not going to produce anything. You're not going to have any sales going on in this particular uh, region. So we'll, we'll look at how we are going to solve this problem. My name is Hari Rajagopalan, and I will be walking you through this uh, problem. So we looked at fixed or lump sum costs. Uh, could be the cost of lease, or rent, purchase an equipment or a vehicle. Uh, it could be the setup cost required to prepare a machine or produce a different type of product. It could be the cost to construct a new production line that will be required if a particular decision is made. Cost of hiring personnel personnel that will be required if a particular decision is made or even in a project if you select a project then you incur some costs you know so that's your fixed cost problem so here's an example from Remington manufacturing there are three products each of which must undergo machining grinding and assembly operations and we have a table here which talks about the hours of machining grinding and assembly uh, we'll come to the table the cost accounting department estimated that each unit of product one manufactured and sold will have $48 in profit. Two and three is $55 per unit in profit. So it's each unit, this is per unit profit. But the manufacturing of unit one requires a setup cost of $1,000 and two and three are 800 and 900 respectively. So these are fixed costs, right? You just have a setup, right? The marketing department believes it can sell all it produced. Therefore, the management wants to determine the most profitable mix. So we're going back to the basic problem of profitable mix, but now we are introducing fixed cost here. So let's look at the table. Here is the table. And we have operations, machining, grinding, assembly. We have the unit profit, setup costs. Remember, unit profit is per unit. Where a setup cost, it doesn't matter whether you produce one or produce thousand, you're incurring the same amount. And then you have hours available uh, right here, right? And this is the hours required for each one of these products. So we have to model this and solve it in linear programming. So here, remember, we've got a profit, so we want to maximize the profit. And the profit is given here. So obviously, there is x1, x2, and x3. These are the number of units of item one, item two, and item three we need to make. And so then it's pretty simple, right? I mean, um, we just do 2x1 plus 3x2 plus 6x3 is less than 600. That's the machining hours, right? This looks like an old um, um, make versus buy problem uh, or your Blue Ridge hot tubs problem, pretty simple. But yet we have this complication with setup costs, right? So we have to deal with that. So decision variables, First, we have Xi is the amount of product I to be produced. That's X1, X2, X3. So that's the number of units. But then we have another three binary variables, which is Y1, Y2, Y3, which is one if you're going to produce X1, X2, X3, right? So if you, if you look at Y1, Y1 is one if X1 is greater than zero. So if you're going to produce this, then Y1 has to be one. If Y1 is zero, you cannot produce X1 at all, okay? So remember, you can manufacture, only manufacture any product if you choose to incur setup cost. And there we go, all right? So your total profit is, you're going to maximize, of course, your per unit profit, and you're going to subtract your setup cost from it, okay? You're going to subtract your setup cost, and that's your, so if you, if this is one, then you incur thousand, and then this can be a value greater than zero, okay? So subject to some constraints, the first one is resource constraints, your machining, grinding, and assembly. And I won't go through this. This is straightforward. You've been do doing that. All Ys are binary. All Xs are greater than zero. You can also put them integer if you need to. But is there something missing? How do you establish that 
x uh, 1 will be greater than 0 only if y1 is 1. y2 is equal to 1 only then x2 can be greater than 0. If y1 is 0, then x1 has to be equal to 0. So we've got to establish that. You don't want to use an if function in Excel, and I'll talk about that uh, later on after we do the Excel here. We'll just talk about that. But right now, we'll talk about this missing link. And these are called the linking constraints, and we call it the big M variable. So x1, x2, x3, what we're trying to do is we're saying, hey, this is less than or equal to some large number. And then we look at y1, y2, y3. And the reason is, and these large numbers should be greater than any possible value that this can occur. So if you look at this right now, x1, x2, x3 will not take any value greater than 1,000. They'll all be less than 1,000. So you can have m as 999, right? So you can say x1. So when y1 is 1, x1 will be less than 999. When y1 is 0, x1 will be less than or equal to 0, but it's positive. Therefore, it will be equal to 0, okay? So as we said, if x1 is greater than 0, then this will force y1 to be equal to 1. If x1 is equal to 0, then y can be 0 or 1. Um, so the m1, m2, m3 will impose the upper bounds on x1. So we need to find reasonable values for m. So let's look at this here, the three different constraints here. For x1, if we want to find a good value, reasonable value for m1, we have to consider x1 here and assume x2, x3, x2 and x3 are equal to 0. So if x2 and x3 are equal to 0, then x1 would be 600 divided by 2, that's 300. 300, x 300 divided by 6, that's 50. And then here, 400 divided by 5, that's 80. So these constraints, three constraints will force at the best x1 can be 50. Can never be more than 50. All right. Similarly, you can find values for x2 and x3. Now remember, m1, you can have a larger value. If you look at these constraints, you can see that the maximum is 600, 300, and 400. So if you use 999, that should be fine. But here is the model we have. Here are the resource constraints, and here are the linking constraints. So we use 50 for y1, 67 for y2, and 73 for y3. Like I said, if you use 999 for all three, you will be fine, right? So here is your model. Let's go to Excel and Let's take a look at this problem. All right, so as you can see, the setup is very simple. One of the advantages of this rectangular setup method is that you can do it. It doesn't matter which model, all the models are the same. So you start off with x1, x2, x3, y1, y2, y3, leave the first row blank, second row, you set it up, some product, right and then you plug in your values you'll notice that i've used nine nine minus nine 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 but you can use the, the values we have done as 50 67 and 75 but i've used a very large value nine 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 but even if you use minus 50 it will not be a problem so uh as i said any value above 50 should work for linking constraint one any value about 66.67 will work for 2. Any value about 75 will work for 3. How did I arrive at 50, 66.67, and 75? I essentially used these three formulas here. And for x1, I assumed x2 and x3 are 0. And therefore here, um, this was, you can then calculate it, right? 600 divided by 2, 300 divided by 6, 400 divided by 5. For x2, we assumed x1 and x3 is equal to 0. So x2 is 600 divided by 3, 300 divided by 3, and then 400 divided by 6. Similarly, for x3, you're going to have 600 divided by 6, 300 divided by 4, and 400 divided by 2. So you can, you can calculate that. Or 
you can make sure that your value is substantially large enough that it does not affect this as I've done here using the 999 variables. Okay, And you need to make sure these three are constrained to be integer, as you can see here. And then these three are constrained to be binary variables. And that's very important that you do. Of course, here it's maximization. Costs are negative. Profits are positive and you will end up with your answer as we see here, all right? So this is your Excel setup. I think from now onwards, Excel setup is pretty easy to look at. I'm not gonna go over the Excel setup. You can, um, you can go ahead and um, if you have any questions, you can always ask me. So I'm not going to start doing any more Excel setups from now onwards. Now coming back to the PowerPoint slides, we're going to look at why we should not use if functions. So we can easily model the relationship between x1 and y1 by using an if function, right? They say if it's greater than zero, then it's a one, otherwise it's zero. Uh, but Excel's solver, if you use a if function, makes it nonlinear. So because they're changing cells and using linking constraints to enforce proper relationship between x and y, Rich Solver Platform will attempt to reformulate it, any model containing if functions to equivalent linear models. This does not always work, even if an alternate linear model exists. So you should do it yourself and not rely on Rich Solver Platform. If you do it in this class, I will definitely mark it wrong because I don't want you to use if functions. It makes it makes the uh, problems run forever, and it creates more load on your computer. So automatic reformulation is controlled by the non-smooth model transformation property in platform tab, but we are not going to use that. I expect you guys to be efficient modelers. So you can also add um, minimum order restrictions if you want to. So let's say Remington does not want to manufacture any unit of product three unless it produces at least 40 units. So basically product three, it says you, if you produce 40, you got to do at least 40 units. Then you have, of course, X3 is less than M3, Y3, 999, Y3, but you can also add this other constraints. X3 is greater than or equal to 40, Y3, which will give you the minimum order restriction. And I've shown you on the Excel file how to set it up. 